everybody. Welcome to Get Smarter and Make Stuff. I'm Craig. Well, for the past few weeks, I guess, I've been playing around with an idea that has mostly been a bunch of failures. Um, I'm trying to kind of further my uh, casting abilities, the ability to cast in metal, and I've taken this side trail down the road of making molds of things so that I can then, you know, uh, do an investment plaster cast and then uh, cast the metal into that. And uh, uh, anyway, I've got a whole saga. I thought I would uh, tell you about how far I've gotten. No success for yet, so I guess this will maybe be part one of what will hopefully ultimately be a success story, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. <music> Okay, we are over here at the bench, and uh, let me explain a little bit about what I'm trying to do. So, here is the object that I've been kind of experimenting with. It is a bust of uh, Leonardo da Vinci, um, just kind of an interesting object I found online. I printed it uh, on my SLA printer, so it's got nice detail. And the goal would be to be able to reproduce this object in metal, uh, preserving as much of the detail as possible. Um, so the way I started out was sort of the, maybe the typical way, um, which is this stuff. So this is uh, Umu 30, smooths on Umu 30. This is really good stuff. You can make really wonderful uh, molds with this, very detailed molds. Um, it's a two-part uh, silicone. Uh, it comes out nice and soft. Here's the mold that I made. You can kind of maybe see that it's nice. It's actually the right. Uh, firmness to be able to pry it off the object that you've cast, but still to have enough sort of structure to hold up. Okay, so this stuff is great. You should absolutely use this stuff. Um, however, it has one, mm, two major drawbacks really. Um, one is that it's pretty expensive. This is what, I don't know, a liter, a quart, something around those lines if you all told. Um, and this is something like $40 US. Um, which, you know, I wouldn't mind actually. I mean, I made this and I still have plenty left over. So if it was, if I was able to get, you know, five or six molds out of it, that's not too bad. The problem is that as soon as you open this stuff, it starts to go bad. You can actually see I've written the date on here 23rd of August. As I record this, it's the 4th of September. So it's only been around a week. Um, so I expect it'll be fine. Um, but I do know that I've had this stuff sit on the shelf for, you know, six months because I'm doing a lot of different things. I don't necessarily use it right away. And I've opened it up and it's just been completely unusable, hard as a rock. Uh, this time I did go ahead and shoot a little bit of argon in there. Uh, so this is a sold as wine preserver. And I'll put links for all this stuff down below. Um, so this is just argon, I believe. And I shot it in there to hopefully maybe keep some of the oxygen away from the silicone. But I think by virtue of mixing it up, um, which I had to do in order to combine it, I probably put enough oxygen into the mix that it's already starting to go bad. Don't even want to kind of open it up to figure out what's up. So I started to wonder what substitutes we could use for this stuff. Um, and I should preface all this by saying that, like everything on this channel, I'm not an expert. The one thing you can maybe listen to me about is woodworking, <laughs> because I've been doing that for a bit longer, although there are plenty of people that know more. But the truth is I'm interested in trying new things, like, for example, you know, making molds in metal. <coughs> um, and uh, as a result, I'm pretty much always a beginner because <laughs> I'm always trying something new. So anything you see here, two things. First of all, don't assume this is the way it needs to be done. And second of all, um, if you see me doing anything stupid, um, particularly if it's unsafe, you know, let me know. Uh, leave a message down in the comments, shoot me a message on Twitter, whatever. Just you know, bring it to my attention. Okay, so I actually have been doing quite a few experiments um, on how to. Uh, find an alternative that would have the properties I want. This is my lab notebook. Uh, and what properties do I want? I would like it to be um, able to accept a lot of detail. And actually, let's maybe see if you can kind of see in here. That really does look good. I have a macro lens over here that might be, you might be able to see it even better. So yeah, this, this results in a really wonderful uh, mold. Um, and so I want something that would be able to have the same sort of level of detail. Uh, I want it to be cheap, um, you know, uh, something that's a fairly low cost per mold. Uh, my, my brother actually, uh, he is a forensic chemist, and I've been talking to him about a lot of this stuff uh, because, you know, chemistry, right? Uh, how do some of these things involve questions of chemistry. And he shot me a link for what the, he uses at his crime lab that he works at. Uh, it's a two-part uh, silicone 
Um, he says he's been using it for a long time, but he's using it in really small stuff. It was like $250 for like 250 milliliters. It was insanely expensive. So I definitely want something that is less expensive and ideally um, made with easily available components. Like I don't necessarily want to be or ordering, um, you know, chemicals from a lab supply company. Um, uh, that's okay if that's how it turns out, but um, if so, I'd really like them to be safe to work with. Um, and I want it to be convenient, and that's so that means things like you know uh, not having to wait like three weeks for something to cure. All right, so step one was um, deciding well maybe I'll try to use some silicone caulk. So this is you know Gorilla 100% silic silicone white. There are two different types of silicone caulk: silicone one and two. I believe this is one. I have not yet experimented with um, with silicone two. So I and I don't know how. I haven't even looked into it, so maybe that's another avenue. I'm really still in the middle of all this. Um, and so, you know, straight out of the tube, this stuff is way, way, way too thick to use. Like, you could never get it to, to flow around a mold and, and, and take good detail. I mean, you might be able to get it around, but there'd be tons of bubbles in it. Uh, now, I do have a vacuum chamber, um, and I'm perfectly willing to use that. It sort of meets my criteria, because even though they're not cheap, and I'll put a link down below to um, the ones I'm using, they are a one-time investment, so I have it. I can use it over and over again, so I don't really consider that to be a big... Um, a big barrier to my cost um, concerns. Um, and so it's way too thick, and so I said, okay, well, what if we thin it? Um, and if you read the back of the tube, it says you can thin it with mineral spirits. Okay, and so I tried that, and what do you know? It works great. Um, you can see here I mixed it with mineral spirits, um, and I uh, poured it into a little Dixie cup, uh, and the result is you can kind of see the, the detail is really good. Bring it over here under the macro lens, you can see just really nice detail. You even get the, I don't know if you can make that out or not, but like the the little recycling symbol on the bottom. It's got a bunch of dirt because it's on my bench, but it really came out very nicely. Um, so the immediate, uh, so, the, so a couple things. First of all, you have to thin it a lot, a lot, a lot to, um, to get it to pour. Something a little bit more than one to one. So uh, by weight, I did like 100 grams of silicone. And then somewhere around 125 grams of uh, mineral spirits, I was starting to get um, good results in terms of being able to pour it over a mold and have it flow around and you know take the detail without too much monkeying. Um, I was still getting voids, but when I popped it into the vacuum chamber, it um, bubbled up, and so that gave me good uh, indication that maybe the, uh, gosh, that is filthy, my bench is filthy, um, gave me a good indication that maybe the bubbles were coming out and that we could expect no voids. And in fact, um, th this is sort of typical, again, let's go to the macro here. This is pretty typical of what I was getting and you can see there's even though there's junk stuck to it there's no voids like it's a really good uh, result it has a lot of detail and um, we're not seeing any like problems that bubbles would cause okay so so far so good um, the problem there was that it was uh, taking a really long time to cure like days and days and days to cure um, actually let me just show you my my experiments list here, so I have them lettered. So up, up in the corner, you can see maybe that's F E, and I'm all the way up to experiment. You know, Q R. I think I'm on S now. Yeah, it's, S is my latest one. So I pretty well got the formula done. And if you can see, kind of some of the things I've been doing there: 50 grams of Gorilla White, 75 grams of Mineral Spirits. So that's 1.5 to one. That makes a really thin um, mix. And then this next ingredient was the next thing I hit on. And I've heard about people doing this before. Um, it's cornstarch, and so this is just regular, you know, cornstarch that you would get, um, you know, just at the grocery store or whatever, 100% cornstarch. What I discovered, I mean, I didn't discover it, but what, uh, it was new to me anyway. I knew people had been using this to make a sort of putty for molding. I don't really want a putty. I want more of a liquid like what you get with the, uh, the two-part stuff. Um, and what I discovered is when you add this, it vastly speeds up the, uh, the cure. Like it went from taking three days until it was sort of you know not gooey in the middle to being three hours and it was all the way cured in the middle, um, so that was really great. And so uh, now I have something that is pourable that I can uh, degas in a vacuum because the viscosity is low enough and that will cure in just a few hours or at least cure enough to be able to to demold it. And in fact, I had pretty good success with that. So this is a mold that I made. I made a little 3D printed uh, container just to, to fill it up that has, it comes, it comes apart in two pieces. It's like a shell, uh, just so I could you know, be able to get this out, demold it later. And, and if you can see down in here, but it looks like it took the detail pretty well. 
again, let's look on the, uh, you know, hopefully you can kind of see that it took, it seemed to have taken the detail pretty well. I know it's a little difficult to, actually I can go ahead and peel this one open because for reasons I'll explain in a minute, it was not particularly, uh, it was not successful for other reasons. But you can kind of see the beard there is, it came out real nice. And everything came out really nice. And um, in fact, <coughs> I went ahead and said, OK, great. So the next step would be to make a wax um, cast. So I'd have the original object, this Leonardo head, would be now in wax. And with the silic two-part silicone mold, that's exactly what you get. And it looks great. Um, why do you want it wax? Because you then take plaster and you pour the plaster around the wax in a little flask like this. And in fact, that little green thing sticking up there is the tail end of the wax mold that's in there. And then you burn the wax out in an oven, leaving a hollow plaster mold in the shape you want with all the detail. And then you can pour metal into that. So I haven't done that part yet. This is still sitting here waiting for me to get my um, foundry going so I can melt metal. But this, uh, this, is, this is ready for burnout. And so I thought. Well, this is looking really promising. So, you know, the, the detail looks really good. Um, so I poured wax into it and um, let it set up. And when I took it out, the thing I noticed was that the wax was a little bit, I'll have a picture of it maybe, but the wax was a little bit um, gummy, like it was a little soft, you know. And as a result, if you touch it, the detail would, would uh, disappear on you, like you would basically be able to smudge the model, almost like the layer was, the top layer was sort of soft. And I believe the reason is that the mineral spirits, uh, which I had used to thin the silicone, were still present. And they were leaching out of the silicone and into the caulk. And um, that seems pretty likely because when I left this mold for a few more days, I noticed that it had gotten smaller. So you're probably not going to be able to tell. But like this, this is the two-part silicone. It has retained its shape and size very well. This is the one I did. And you can maybe see there's sort of a concavity there. So the whole thing had shrunk. And that's not surprising. Silicone uh, caulk uh, shrinks when it cures anyway. And then on top of that, I'd added a whole bunch of mineral spirits. And the volume of that would be displaced. And so not so great. Um, maybe fine. Like, I have to really play around with this a little bit more. Like I said, I'm sort of still in the middle of these experiments. The, the leaching of the mineral spirits is also a big problem. But it seems like now that it's been sitting around for a few days, it's probably fine. I've also played around with immersing the silicone in an acetone bath, uh, hoping that the acetone would draw the mineral spirits out. But I haven't had a chance to really see if that had the effect that I want. So a little bit more experimenting to do there. All right. Um, finally, the place where I'm at now is I'm att attempting um, to see if I can replace some of the volume that would be lost to stabilize the volume, basically, by adding fillers. And so this is uh, silicone caulk mineral spirits to thin it down enough to be able to be pourable, uh, cornstarch to speed the cure, and sand as a filler. And I just did this this morning. And it's already, you know, just it's just tacky, but it feels like it's really setting up well. And I even uh, decided it was going so well that I have a little, uh, my poured it into my little two-part mold here. It's not really, you can't really see what's going on here. But basically, this is a little. 3D printed uh, plastic container that I mentioned, the two parts that's all taped together so it doesn't leak. And I filled it with the uh, silicone and sand mixture. And I'm just going to wait for that to set up. Um, so with luck, when I pop that open, um, I'll have a good mold inside. The, the sand will have uh, occupied the volume enough that it won't shrink on its own. And I'll have to wait a few days to see if that's true, because it, it took a while before that manifested with this. Um, and at that point, I think I might be in good shape. Now, the sand may result in some loss of detail. We'll see. That may be a, a uh, trade-off I need to accept. Um, but I think it might be OK. And I also have some other powders that I can experiment with. This is just play sand. I could use a finer sand and see if that uh, results in, in better results. So this is where I'm at. Uh, like I said, this stuff, the two-part silicone, awesome. Definitely use this if you are making a lot of molds and you think you're going to be able to get through the, get through the materials before they go bad, or you know, if it's cost effective for you or based on your constraints. Um, but I'm really hopeful that this might go somewhere. Again, a bunch more things to try in, in terms of how much sand to use, maybe not use sand, maybe use other things, and see if I can get the the shrinkage factor to go away. If this does actually work and the shrinkage uh, is compensated for by the sand, um, then it's a winner, because it hits all my other buttons, right? It is affordable, easily sourced 
components, you know, we're just talking about mineral spirits and caulk, which you get at the hardware store, cornstarch, which you probably have at home, and sand, obviously, or whatever filler we wind up using, it'll be something that you can get easily. Um, so really pretty hopeful. Um, but like I said, mostly it's been failures, so I won't be at all surprised if this fails as well. Um, oh, there is one more thing I'm trying actually right now. I'll show you this. So I found this stuff uh, online. Somebody mentioned it somewhere. I don't remember where. This is um, a product from Alumalite. You know, they usually I usually associate their name with um, resin, and it's uh, called um, uh, Amazing Remelt. And I don't know what it is. It's like a sort of a gelatin, maybe. Um, not sure exactly. It's non-toxic and reusable, and it just comes like this. You can see it's kind of flexible. And it melts at around 130 Fahrenheit, whatever that is in centigrade, 50, 60, something like that. Um, so it's pretty low temperature. Um, and you can make castings with it. And uh, that might be a way to make a mold that would be reusable, that would hopefully accept wax. Might need to chill this stuff um, in the freezer or whatever to make sure that it doesn't melt in contact with the wax. i got to figure out what's sort of the difference between the melting point of this stuff and the melting point of... of wax, and I have various waxes as well. This is uh, paraffin that I've been using, but um, I have some beeswax um, that I can try as well and see if they, that's more compatible. But uh, I think this should take detail really well. Um, it's flexible enough to be able to make demolding easily. Um, and like I said, it's reusable, so, you know, and it's actually pretty cheap. A pound of this was, I think, $15. Again, there'll be a link down below for the Amazon where you can get that if you want to play with it as well. I've got it heating up in this little uh, candle wax uh, thing that might uh, I'm going to play with, but uh, this this might be promising, and uh, I'm sure I'll think of other things, but it's it's been fun, <laughs> um, you know, attempting to make things. I'm definitely getting smarter, but mostly by failing, so hopefully this is entertaining. Like I said, I'm no expert on these things. I just hope that uh, my experiments, um, even if they don't have any value to you in terms of, you know, something that you want to be able to do will be uh, entertaining. I'm, I'm pretty entertained myself and having a lot of fun talking to my brother about this. I think we'll leave it there, and uh, there'll probably be a part two on this video when I make more progress or discover that these things do or don't work. I'll let you know about it. Uh, so until then, hope you are having fun going out there and getting smarter and making stuff yourself.